This is a short overview explaining how to use the SD card of an Omron Sysmat controller as an FTP server. All the controllers in the Sysmat range are equipped with SD card slots, the positions of which are highlighted in the slide. The controller supports SD card capacity up to 16 gigabytes. For best performance and service life, it is recommended to use Omron's own SD cards However, third-party cards can be used, but performance cannot be guaranteed. Some of the functions that the SD card can be used for are reading and writing files to the card with program instructions. This can be used for data collection or recipe data. Reading and writing of files from a remote FTP client. This is useful for retrieving log data previously stored. Backup and restoring of controller programs and also transferring programs to the controller when power is applied. Some things to remember when using SD cards in any application. Never remove the SD card from the controller when either the SD Busy or SD Power LEDs are lit. Always press the SD Power supply button before removing the card. This will re reduce the risk of any lost or corrupt data. The service life of any SD card is limited so they shouldn't be relied on as a long-term data store. Any data should be backed up regularly. When using Omron SD cards, the deterioration of the memory and end of life can be monitored in the user program, so replacement can be made before any loss of data occurs. So now we're gonna make the settings on the controller to allow us to connect to it with an FTP client. So first of all, we're going to start Sysmat Studio software. So I've got a controller connected at the moment via Ethernet. So if we just do direct connection via Ethernet, it should find the device. Okay, so it's found the controller and now it's asking us, do we want to update the name in our project to match the name that's stored within the controller? So we'll just say yes to that. So now we're connected, so it's automatically found and set our controller project to be the right CPU type. So this is an, an X102 1200 version 1.40 firmware. So for now we can just go offline. So the settings for the ethernet uh, under controller setup, built-in Ethernet port settings. So if we go into here first of all, we can see we've got the uh, IP address settings for port 1 and port 2. So the NX102 has two Ethernet ports on, on separate networks. So we're going to be using port 1 for our FTP connection. So we should be able to then um, <coughs> go to our Ethernet FTP tab. And at the moment, by default, FTP is disabled. So if we select use and then just enter a name for our FTP connection. So this is a login, login name or username as it might appear in the client. Um, and then just set a password. So that'll do for now. One thing to remember when using FTP is that the um, time on the device that you're connecting to and the FTP client time must be within a certain limit. So it's quite often useful to set up on the controller to use a network time protocol connection so that the controller is always in sync with the network that it's connected to. This saves a lot of problems um, if you've got issues with things like daylight saving, time changes, etc. If all of a sudden you find your FTP connection stops working, it could well be the, the problem with the time settings. So it's useful using the network time protocol setup to make sure everything's synchronized. Another thing to note as well, certainly with the NX102 and NX1P2 range, they come now without um, batteries fitted. So if you need to use the real time clock, which requires a battery, then you need to buy that as an optional extra and um, just install that in the, in the controller. So if we go online now, so we can see with the yellow bar there in, in signifying that we're online. So we'll synchronize the settings that we've just made with the controller. Transfer to controller.
Okay, so synchronization successful. So close the synchronization window. So now we should be able to start our FTP client software. So I've already installed an FTP client called FileZilla, which is a very common, um, freely available um, FTP client. They also do an FTP server, which is also free. So if you just go to type FileZilla into Google, you'll find it and, and install the client software to suit your operating system. So information that we need to enter in here is the host name. So this is the IP address where you will find the PLC. So that was 192.168.250.1. Username was what we just used in the settings. So that was Omron FTP and then Omron Omron for the password. Port number is always 21 generally for FTP. And I think you can even leave it blank in here and it will assume that. If you've set anything differently, then obviously you need to set that. So then if we just click Quick Connect, <clears throat> you can see in here you've got a summary of the connection process. Um, but what you're looking for really is that you get a successful status when the connection's made. And then in this window at the right hand side here, this is the um, folder structure of the FTP server, which is the uh, NX102 controller. So you can see Memcard 1 which is actually our uh, SD card within the controller. So if we double click on that, we can see that we've got a certain number of files. We've got a JPEG file and four data log CSV files on the controller. So if we go back to Sysmap Studio, we can also browse the SD card from here. So under the controller menu, we've got an SD card viewer. So you'll see in here, we've got the same files that we found with the FTP connection. So this browser is quite useful. So if you're checking data log files and things like that, so you can see what files are there. You also, from in here, you can um, do a initialization of the card. So that clears all the data and formats the card. You can delete items, you can copy, paste, create new folders, rename files, etc., etc. So quite a useful little browser tool to uh, just check the status of the SD card. So if we close that down again, go back to our FTP folder. So from within the FTP client, um, we can just select a, a folder on our desktop or let's say our documents folder. And we could say we want to select all these files and drag them to our documents folder. Anything that exists just overwrite, we can miss incidents. So then if we go to our file explorer, and then go to documents we can see we've got the four files that we've copied um, across similarly you can go in the opposite direction so we've copied log data files off from the controller we can also send recipe data files for instance from a remote network to the controller so it can use that recipe data for production information for a, a day's production for instance so we've got recipe.txt on my PC so this is my computer D drive so we can just drag that across drop that onto the SD card <clears throat> then again we can just go back to the controller menu SD memory card and we'll see the recipe data file is here so that's just a very simple overview of how to use an FTP client to connect to the SD card in the controller and like we said, there's quite a lot of other options that you can um, you can do with the FTP uh, functions of the uh, Sysmap controller. So sending files from the controller to a remote network location. So this data log files could actually be sent from within your PLC program. Um, so it can all be automated to save you having to do this manual connection and copying files. Hope you found that useful.